Hi guys, today's case is on the mysterious disappearance of Brianna Maitland, an 18-year-old Vermont student who went missing March 19, 2004. A lot of attention was brought to Brianna's case when this mysterious photo of her car emerged. Brianna was born October 8, 1986. She lived with her parents and older brother on their farm in Burlington, Vermont, near the U.S. and Canadian border. She attended Missaquique Valley High School. When Brianna turned 17, she decided she wanted to move away from her high school and her parents' farm to be closer to her group of friends, so she transferred to Enosburg Falls High School. While all of this was going on, Brianna ended up moving in and out of several different friends' home, so she really didn't have a stable environment to live. By the end of February 2004, Brianna had dropped out of high school and moved in with one of her really close friends, Jillian Stout. They lived together in Sheldon, Vermont. Eventually, Brianna did enroll herself into GED courses so that she could complete her high school diploma. On Friday, March 19, 2004, after completing her GED test, Brianna and her mother went out to lunch to celebrate her GED achievement. Her father was unable to attend because of something to do with work or business meetings. Brianna's mom describes her that day as being in very good spirits. She said Brianna was very happy and cheerful that day. They even discussed future colleges that she would possibly be attending. So overall, Brianna was in a pretty good mood. According to her mother, after lunch, her and Brianna spent the rest of the afternoon shopping. She recalls that while waiting in the checkout line at one of the stores, something outside caught Brianna's eye and attention. Brianna abruptly told her mom that she needed to go outside for a second and that she would return shortly. After completing her purchase, her mother met Brianna in the parking lot. She describes Brianna as very shaken up and very distraught, but Brianna didn't mention what was going on, while, why she was so shaken up or distraught. Brianna asked her mom to take her home because she needed to go home and get ready for work. She had a shift at the Black Lantern Inn that night. Between 3.30 and 4 p.m., Brianna's mom dropped her back off at Jillian Stout's home. This would be the last time she would see her daughter alive. According to Jillian Stout, sometime before Brianna left to work, she had left a note saying that she would return home later that day. Brianna drove her 1985 Oldsmobile sedan, which was registered in her mother's name, to work. At the end of her work shift, she clocked out and left the Black Lantern Inn at approximately 11.20 p.m. According to her co-workers, she told them she needed to get home and rest because she was working a second job at St. Albans in the morning. All of her friends claimed that Brianna was 100% alone in the car when she left that night. On Saturday, March 20th, 2004, in early afternoon, a Vermont State Police trooper was dispatched to an abandoned house on Route 118 in Richford almost a mile from the Black Lantern Inn where Brianna worked. Police found Brianna's 1985 Oldsmobile backed into the side of an old abandoned house known locally as the Old Dutchburn House. You can see here that the car rear was sitting in the side of the house and a piece of the plywood from one of the houses and windows had fallen onto the trunk of the car. Two paychecks from Brianna's job were laying on the front seat of the car and one outside of it. Law enforcement also found loose change, a water bottle, and an unsmoked cigarette. At first, it was assumed by the state trooper that this probably was like a drunk driver who abandoned the vehicle, so they just had the vehicle towed back to a local garage. Jillian, Brianna's roommate, says she saw the note on Friday the 20th. She went away for the weekend, and when she got home, the note was still on the same spot, and she assumed Brianna was staying at another friend's place. She did not become alarmed until the following day when she called Brianna's mom. This time, Brianna's mom was unaware that her daughter had been missing and that the police had even found her car. On Tuesday, March 23rd, she began calling various friends, family members, and co-workers of Brianna. No one seemed to have known the whereabouts of Brianna. So she filed a missing persons report that day. Thursday, March 25th, Brianna's parents gave photos of her to Vermont State Police in St. Albans. Police showed the pictures of the Oldsmobile they found at the old Dutch burn house. They immediately identified it as Brianna's car. Her mother says she felt instinctively revulsed by the photo. She believes that someone else had left the car that way, not Brianna. It was later reported that three weeks prior to her disappearance, Brianna was attacked at a party by a female friend named Kelly LaCrosse. 
Apparently, Brianna refused to fight Kelly, who then hit her in the face multiple times, resulting in a broken nose and a concussion. It was unclear what the attack was about, but family and friends believed that it was over a boy that was at the party that night. Brianna did file a complaint, but that complaint was dropped three weeks after her disappearance. Police cleared Kelly of any involvement in Brianna's disappearance. Police initially believed that she may have been a runaway case, but after Brianna's car was sent to a crime lab for evidence and returned to her parents, her father noted that Brianna's ATM card, migraine medication, glasses, and contact lens case was all left in the car. These are items that Brianna obviously would never have left behind. Further investigation later led police to believe that there may have been some sort of foul play. The FBI joins the case. They post flyers stating that due to the way in which the car was discovered, it led them to believe that the scene may have been staged to look like an accident. Her parents believe she may have been abducted by multiple people because according to them, Brianna was very well trained in jujitsu. So there is no way that one person could have attacked her and just took in her. It had to be at least two people. After her initial disappearance, a few people came forward reporting seeing her vehicle at the Dutch Burn house, including one of her ex-boyfriends. He claims that around 4 a.m. on Saturday, March 20th, he was heading back from a party in Canada and passed the scene. He thought he recognized the vehicle, but he did not see anyone in or around it. Mont State Police received an anonymous tip claiming that Brianna was being held against her will in a house in Beckenshire, Vermont. Authorities found the house was being rented by two known drug dealers from New York, Ramon C. Ryans and Nathaniel Charles Jackson. Police raided the house on April 15, 2004. When the police got there, they found a substantial amount of drugs, including cocaine and marijuana. However, they did not find any signs of Brianna. One of the guys was arrested on drug charges. According to Brianna's friends, she had been experimenting with some pretty hardcore drugs, specifically crack cocaine, and was friends with the two drug dealers. Brianna's parents did report that they had been receiving some pretty creepy phone calls from an anonymous caller claiming that she had been tied to a tree in the woods and then disposed of at the bottom of a lake. In late 2004, police received a statement from an anonymous older female who implicated both Ryan's and Jackson's in Maitland's disappearance and alleged murder. The signed affidavit contained allegations written in graphic detail that Maitland had been murdered approximately a week after her disappearance. The woman who provided the affidavit claimed that Ryan's murdered Maitland during an argument over money she had lent him to purchase crack, and that her body had been temporarily stored in the basement of a recently incarcerated local woman's home. Maitland's body was then allegedly dismembered with a table saw and disposed of on a pig farm. Law enforcement was unable to collaborate the claims in the letter. In 2006, security footage at the Caesar World Casino in Atlantic City, New Jersey showed a woman resembling Maitland sitting at a poker table. The woman was never properly identified. In 2012, law enforcement investigated a potential connection between Maitland's disappearance and serial killer Israel Keys who committed numerous rapes and murders in Alaska, Oregon, and Washington, as well as in Vermont and New York. The FBI ruled a Key's potential connection to Maitland's disappearance in late December 2012, shortly after Keys committed suicide in Anchorage, Alaska. In March 2016, on the case's 12th anniversary, investigators revealed to a local television station they had recovered DNA samples from Maitland's car. The results of the test were not made public, in July 2006, the farmhouse where Maitland's vehicle was discovered was destroyed in a fire. So what do you guys think? What are some of your theories? Please let me know in the comments down below. If you like videos like these, then don't forget to check out my last episode. I will leave it linked on the screen right here. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my future episodes. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!